Hi, in this video we want to apply wind to the tree that we created in earlier videos. So this is the tree that we have and I need to apply wind that would actually blow through the tree in a gusting manner so that we start with a gentle wind and then move on to a more violent wind and look at the different parameters that we need to change under the hyperwind section of Forrester so that we get nice realistic gusting wind. The first thing I need to take note of is that if I check the wind on I am gonna get wind but it's not gonna play in real time of course because of all the branches and the leaves that are displayed. So I need to optimize the tree so I can really focus on how the wind is looking. The first thing I will try is go to the branch level and reduce the insertion count to one and this will actually give me one branch at level 1. I can use it, however, to actually uh, judge on the quality of the wind. And once I'm happy with this result, I can actually go ahead and increase the insertion count back to 15 or whatever number I want to use. Also, I can just go back to the branch uh, global and at the end increase the branch segments say to 10 or whatever value I want to use to get a higher resolution tree. But for now, I'll keep it set to 5 just to optimize the display for the wind generation. So I'm going to check wind on now and let's see the frame rate that we get. We're getting 16.5 um, while I'm recording this. I can, if I want, do uh, several things. I can reduce the viewport level and this will give me a more than read time frame rate or I can keep the level set to 5 and go to line mode and this will also give me a real time frame rate so I can use this to actually judge on the quality of the wind. So here I am getting wind but it's a very gentle wind and I would like it to be a bit more alive. So I'm gonna go to hyper wind and start to change the parameters over here. The first thing that we have is uh, the wind model, which can be 0 or 1. And this will actually intensify the wind. If I set my wind model to 0, the wind has the same intensity whether the branch was facing the wind direction or not. In this case, the wind direction is going along the x axis because I did not change the wind direction. So that's going along the x axis, and I see it from here. If I set it say to 180 then the wind is going to go along the negative x axis and this is clearly visible from here so i'll set it back to zero the wind model zero will um, give the same strength to whether the branch was actually facing the wind direction or not while if i set it to one it's stronger when the branch is uh, going along the direction and weaker if I had branches over here, which I do in reality, and um, this will give me a different look for the wind. For the example that I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial, I was using wind model 1, so I'm going to keep it like so. Now, the wind global multiplier, if you increase it, you're going to get stronger wind like this. Since I want to actually uh, animate the wind from being gentle to more violent, I'm going to start with a value of 1 for the, wind, for the global wind multiplier and increase it in time. The um, end frame, I'm going to set it to 300, so I'm going to have 300 frames. I'll set a keyframe with a multiplier of 1 at the beginning and at the end I'll set the multiplier to 3. Set another keyframe, press play, so I'm going to start with a certain strength and as I go along the animation the wind is gonna get stronger and stronger and of course you can increase this more if you want in my case I stop at 3 but you can just go higher and the wind will get stronger down the animation So that's it. I can actually stop here because I already have something that looks great. I'm going to set it back to 3 just to be more conformed to the animation that I showed you earlier. The wind scale is important. 
if you increase that value, the tree is going to behave more and more like one general entity. If you want to have the branches um, have their own wind um, pattern, you can reduce this value. For example, if I set it to 50 and I press play, then the branches are going to be more and more independent from their neighbors. If you increase this value, the branches are more in conformity with their neighbors. Now, you need to really see the whole tree to judge on this. But um, for this example, I'm going to keep it set to the default, which is 200. The augment wind by level, if I reduce it down to zero, it means that all the branches have a strong wind effect and not only the tip branches. This is useful whenever I have a very strong wind. The default is one, which means that only the tip branches have the strong wind effect. So I'm going to go halfway and just give it a value of 0 0.5. And this is a very good value to actually intensify the strength of the wind, especially when the global wind multiplier is getting increased towards the end of the animation. All right, so that's very good. The level ratio will actually fine tune the augment wind by level. If I set it down to one, more branches will be animated, especially at the starting levels. If I increase it, the higher levels are going to have the stronger animation. So here I'm going to reduce it actually to get more more animated uh, branches and I'm going to give it a value of 1.5. Okay, I'm going to scroll down and here I'm going to play with the directional wind strength and the wavy wind strength. So the directional wind strength, if you increase it, the branches are going to be more directional. The wavy wind strength, the branches are going to be more wavy. Both will add tremendously to the realism of your animation. For the example that I showed you, I was using a directional wind strength of 1.5 and a wavy wind strength of 4. So if I play, I see that I have a very nice and turbulent animation for the branches. But I want this to be toned down or slower at the beginning. So at the beginning, I'm going to reduce the speed to a value of 0 0.15, which is slow. And um, at the end, I'm going to increase the speed to 0 0.3, which is what I had earlier. And this will actually start with a small speed, slow speed, and then gradually increase in strength and speed so that we have the turbulent wind happening. By the way, you can go to three parameters and um, reduce the uh, color strength if you want to, just to get a different color. Or you can set it all the way back to black or something close to black in this case um, to see this maybe clearer if I reduce the color like this. I can also choose highlight last level if I want to see how the last level is animated. Otherwise, I have a good animation here. So um, the last thing I want to do is increase the trunk uh, simulation because here, if you look at the trunk, it's moving but not moving too strongly. I want to um, make this stronger. So I'm going to go to hyperwind, scroll down, and here we have the trunk wind set to 1. I'm going to increase it to 10 so that the trunk is moving and therefore it will also affect the animation of all the branches. You can play with the stiffness of the trunk. If you set it to 3, it means that the trunk is going to start deforming lower down the height of the trunk. If you increase that, the trunk will be deformed only at the tip. The last thing I want to do is um, change the leaf wind strength. I'm going to set it to uh, 10 by 30. This will actually strengthen the leaf uh, wind, so it will be much more visible. This also depends on the wind speed and the global wind multiplier. So at the beginning, the leaf wind strength is going to be um, very gentle, and further down the animation, it's going to intensify according to these values. All right, so now we have a very nice tree animation. So if I go back to my 
branch level one, I can set this back to 15. And um, here I'm ready to render my tree. Of course, if I play it now, it will, it will not play in real time. I need to make a preview render before I do commit to the final render. Also, if I want to use um, motion blur, or if I want to render the animation in any way, I have to cache the simulation. Caching the simulation will not make it play in real time in the viewport. Caching the simulation will cache all the values, the internal values of the hyperwind so that they don't change if you render on different machines or if you stop the rendering and re-render. Also, it's uh, imperative to cache the simulation in case you want to have motion blur. So, all in all, you need to cache the simulation at all times. So, you actually just click on cache simulation and that's it. The simulation is cached. Now, how do you know it's cached? If you selected the tree, you see that you have all these keyframes added for the simulation. So, that's really it. If I go ahead and render this animation, I'm going to get something very similar to this tree because I used almost the same values that I have used in this uh, tree modeling and simulation to get this kind of effect. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the next one.